As someone who's scrolling Instagram or watching YouTube, your head isn't tuned into, oh my God, is this a marketing ploy? Is this an ad? You're not thinking that way. You're just thinking, oh my God, I really like this person. Look at their style. Look at what they own. I would like to own that too. Hey everyone, this is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance and welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how your favorite influencers may just be keeping you broke. Before we get into the video, if you don't already follow Clever Girl Finance on Instagram, head on over. We have so much fun there engaging. Our handle is at Clever Girl Finance. Subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and be sure to stop by clevergirlfinance.com to check out our articles that we post every single day and to sign up for one of our over 30 plus completely free courses. Okay, let's talk about these influencers and how they may be keeping you broke. So this is definitely the era of the influencer. Um, they are basically micro, macro celebrities in a way, and they have a lot of influence over people's purchases, um, actions, and sometimes even behavior. And you know, this is something that is just part of the new age trend. And a lot of marketers leverage influencers to put out their products. And as the name is called influencers, they definitely influence how we spend our money, whether you like it or not. And when you think about the landscape of YouTube and Instagram, we're constantly seeing hauls and unboxings. Sometimes they're tied to brand partnerships. Sometimes they come out of the influencer's pocket. A lot of times it's not always clear what is a partnership, what is you know a real review versus a paid review, but we see tons of these videos, tons of these posts on social media all the time. As someone who's scrolling Instagram or watching YouTube, your head isn't tuned into, oh my God, is this a marketing ploy? Is this an ad? You're not thinking that way. You're just thinking, oh my God, I really like this person. Look at their style. Look at what they own. I would like to own that too. And sometimes it just looks like influencers are balling out of control. They have unlimited funds. They can buy whatever they want, whenever they want. And because social media, YouTube, Instagram, seeing constant posts from people we like, or admire has made it seem like they are just really close to touch, has made them very accessible. We tend to find ourselves relating to people that maybe in the real world, we really don't have that much in common. So when you start relating to this person and you think this person is so accessible, that every time they have something, you're like, oh my God, I want that too. Or it may be subliminal where you constantly see someone with this item and then you see it across so many other different influencer accounts. And before you know it, you find yourself thinking about buying this item when it wasn't even on your radar before, but because you've seen it so much across so many different accounts with so many different people, all of a sudden you're interested. And that's the whole goal of right social media and influencer marketing. It's to get you to purchase and to do it in a subtle way where you feel like, oh my God, I can relate to this person. This is so cool. Wow, they have that. But the one thing that people don't know is what is in that influencer's bank account versus what is in your own bank account, right? So just because you see an influencer unboxing items every single day or multiple times a week doesn't mean that you are in the position to do that. And it doesn't mean that they themselves are even in a position to do that either, right? I've seen so many um, videos and posts on Instagram about influencers or former influencers who, you know, were constantly spending money, chasing views, chasing growth of their accounts, chasing building audience, but they were actually going into debt. There's so many of those stories that these, um, I guess, recovered influencers have posted on Instagram, have posted on YouTube as to what they would have done differently um, regarding taking on debt and the unboxings and the hauls. But you don't get to see that, right? You don't get to see what's happening behind the scenes in the bank accounts, the credit card debt, any of that, when you're watching these excited, happy, amazing hauls. And this isn't a jab or throwing shade at any influencers. I have tons of friends who are influencers who also manage their money really well, but there's also a lot of influencers who maybe get into trouble with credit cards, get into trouble with debt, 
overspending. They're human beings just like you and I. They struggle with self-discipline. They struggle with temptation. And so there's many factors that you may not realize when you're watching an influencer influence you when it comes to making purchases. So if you're in the space where you've recognized that, oh my God, I find myself buying all these things that I didn't plan to buy, but my favorite influencers have them, or I bought this thing not because I loved it, but because I saw so many other people on social media carrying it. Maybe it's time to implement a few changes to help you kind of get out of that space where your favorite influencers are making you broke, even though it's not by their intention, but it might be time to make a change. So what can you do? So one quick and easy thing you can do is unsubscribe or unfollow. And the reason why this can be so impactful is because when you're subscribed to an influencer's channel or you follow an influencer's page, you're constantly being hit with notifications about what they're posting. And so if you follow a series of influencers and all they do is fashion hauls and unboxings and show you what they buy, then the temptation is constantly there for you to spend money. A lot of people end up buying items promoted by influencers that they would never have bought on a regular day. They don't really like, but they're like, oh my God, it looks so good on that person. It's gonna be amazing on me. And they get it and it's like, well, mm, it's not what I thought it was. Or I got into credit card debt buying this item and I should never have bought it because I couldn't afford it. And so unsubscribing and unfollowing basically helps you eliminate the temptation. If you don't see the unboxings, if you don't see the hauls, if you don't see the new images, the new posts, the new items they've purchased, then it doesn't cross your mind to purchase them either. The next thing you wanna do is dust off your why. Your why is that thing that compels you to want to achieve financial wellness. It's that thing that compels you to want to save, to invest, to get out of debt, to start your business, to buy your home, whatever your big goals are, what is your why? What is that thing that's compelling you to pursue these financial goals that you have for yourself? And take that why out, as like I always say, dust it off, put it somewhere where you can see it every day. And that could mean putting on a post-it, putting it on your bathroom mirror, making it your phone screensaver, putting it on the dashboard in your car. You wanna make sure that you can see that why constantly so that you're reminded of why you want to succeed. And so when the temptation finds its way back to you, because it always does, even though you unfollow, even though you unsubscribe, you still will get tempted. Believe me, I've been there. <laughs> And your why is going to help you kind of counter that temptation because you have it front and center and top of mind. You also want to review your goals. What are the things that you want to accomplish? What are the things that you want to achieve in your life with your finances? And your why is helping you stay focused on these goals, but you really want to review your goals and assess your goals and keep them top of mind so that again, when temptation comes your way, you have a compelling reason, a compelling factor in place that helps you get past the temptation and helps you focus on your self-discipline to ultimately be able to accomplish your goals. And then finally, there is absolutely nothing wrong with spending money, buying things that you want, buying that sweater that you saw, that fashion item, that handbag, whatever it might be, but you don't want to be making purchases that you didn't plan, that you don't like based on somebody else's influence indirectly on you because you're perpetually seeing this item. And so one thing you can do is if you have influencers that you follow and there are certain things that you like, put it on a list, right? And sleep on this list for a few weeks, a few months. And then in conjunction with that, set up a dedicated account where you can start to put money aside towards this item. And over time, as you're saving, it will help you get clear on whether you really want that item or not. And then when you get to the point where you actually purchase the item, you'll feel great about it because it's something that you would really have wanted and it'll be guilt-free because you actually dedicated money towards this item. The pressures of social media are real and you really have to be intentional to make sure that despite all the noise, despite all the influencing that's happening, um, you're able to stick to your goals and accomplish the things that you want for your life and that you don't allow what people are posting or unboxing to derail the goals that you have for yourself. And so taking specific action, being intentional about who you follow, who you subscribe to is really important. And also thinking through your purchases and making sure that you're spending time you're not rushing to make decisions especially when they're really really expensive items like handbags or you know designer luxury items you want to make sure you're thinking them through and not just swiping out your credit card because you see your your favorite 10 influencers with the item and you know sometimes the truth is that these influencers don't
don't even like the item or they may buy the item if it's out of their pocket, use it for a video, use it for pictures, and then go back and return that item. But you're there thinking that, oh my God, they bought this, they're building this amazing closet, when that's really not the case. So be very mindful of just all these external factors that could be ultimately affecting your own financial goals. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Tell all your girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance and don't forget to head on over to Instagram, follow us there. Our handle is at Clever Girl Finance and stop by the Clever Girl Finance website. We have new articles on the site every single day, over 30 plus free courses to help you as you work on improving your finances. And we're really just here to support you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.